In this video, we're going to focus on creating a 3D text effect. And to do this, we need to have, of course, a default text. So we're going to put in here some basic text here, just a single line here. So we say ctx.font, and then we say here, font would be, uh, you can say here, this is a string, italic, bolder, um, 50 pixels, and it's fine. And then we can say mono space, for example. Next, what I want to do here is, of course, the ctx dot fill style to give it a color. And in this case, I'll just get one of our colors that I have as a variable, color red. And then finally, here we want to draw the text. So I'm going to say a ctx dot fill text, and the fill text will be the specific text we're going to make. So let's say here, this is a 3D effect. And of course the coordinates. So we're going to say 50 by 50. So if I save this and then I refresh here, you can see here now we have this basic text here. Of course, it is not yet a 3D effect. But to do a 3D effect, all we need to do basically is playing around with these items here. And what I want to do is we want to give here a 3D effect. We make it more thicker, but also we give the effect a white color, but the font itself will become a red one. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, well, let me show you. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to paste this, and I'm going to convert it into a white color. You say this is white, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just duplicate this one, two, three more times. All right. So here we have the white. So we're going to remove this, put that all together, and then afterwards we have here the red color. And what I want to do now is basically here this is a starting point, and then I will just increase this by three pixels every single time. So it's a year 59, 59, and finally here will be 62. And if I save this now and refresh, you get this nice 3D effect here. This is multiple layering. And this is just very basic, but let's start to play around a little bit more to make this like a function. So that's how you should do it normally. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say here, we're going to create a function, we'll say uh, text, I guess, function text design, text design. And then in here, I'm going to move all of this in there. It is a proper indentation, semicolon here. So we have this font here. And what I want to do maybe with the font here, I want to cut this out or move that up. And the reason why is I want to make that based on whatever we type in here, it should automatically understand this here. And here you can see this here is all, out, this is now all manually coded. We could do this slightly more automatic based on whatever the coordinates are or specifically whatever this font size is. Because if this would be 60, we would have a problem here. So the first thing what I want to do then is just very simple. If we're going to solve the uh, text item here. And to do this, or oh, basically we could do it the following. So I'm just going to put it back in here. That's all right. But I'm going to say here, constant text. And this text will be equal to this specific item here. So cut this out, put it in there, semicolon. We have this text, constant, put it in there. If I save this, the refresh, nothing happens. Why? Because we didn't trigger yet the function. So what I want to do now is, I want to trigger the function. I'm going to say here, text design. To trigger this, save that, and there we are. All right, so now we have this, but it is not yet connected. Because if I would put it here, uh, well, basically, it is right now based on this. And what I want to do is I want to get this text in here. So I'm going to put it in here. But this would be also in here. This is our parameter. And the parameter and the, and the constant is now the same, so that's all right. So next what we have here is basically the font size. And what I want to do with the font size is to, to define it here as well. So I want to say font size. And probably what we will need is the x and y coordinates because of this here. So how do we solve this one here? Well, let's create a new constant. And let's say this will be the font size. And this will be 50 pixels. This 50 pixels, I'm going to copy that in here. Because this is a string, we can concatenate that. But I would recommend you to do the following. We're going to use here template literals. I'm going to remove these quotation marks here. And we're going to use backticks. So backticks is on your keyboard below your escape button. Then we're going to say here, italic bolder. And then now 
we have an easier way of concatenation. Normally you have to do plus or like quotation plus and then again plus quotation if you want to have here a constant. But we don't have to do this anymore. Because our backcase, it saves us so we can see a dollar sign. Parentheses, or sorry, no, uh, curly braces. And then we're going to grab here the font size. Put it in there. If I save this now, refresh. All right, so let's see. Uh, uh, somehow it didn't work yet. So let me double check what's going on here. So of course, so what is the issue here? If you look at it very carefully, we have this item here is being set in here, but of course we didn't define it in here. So I want to say here, font size will be equal to this font size. Makes sense. Save that, refresh. Now it works nicely again. All right, so now we have this one. And what I want to, of course, is the X and Y coordinates. So we could basically start with the font size as our X coordinate. But what I want to do here, I will just say here, a, it's, I will just specify it independently. There's a constant X, and this will be one, let's say 100. So we're going to move it a little bit more. And as a constant Y will be equal to 100 as well. So I'm going to put this in here. And here is X comma Y. If I save this, nothing happens yet because we didn't specify it here. So what we need to do here is basically a formula. We say here x, and then we say, well, here we don't have to do anything. And we can say here y as well. And then here down, what we could do is x plus 1. Uh, sorry, no, not plus 1, plus 3. And here we do exactly the same, but then y plus 3. So y plus 3. Here we say x plus 6. And you can see here, this will be x plus 9. Of course, what we could do as well, we could loop through this, and we can loop through the x amount of time, and for every loop, we will multiply it by 3. That would be another, another option as well. For now, I'll just leave that, I'll just show you this one, to make it at least a bit more dynamic, because the moment we start to change this here, we will see that everything will change nicely. So I'm going to make sure 9 and 6, and then finally here, x plus 12, and this will be y plus 12. Save that. Refresh. All right, so now it moves. And now if I say here, test, let's say, there we are. All right, interesting. So now we have one more issue. And I realize that this, of course, is the issue because we need to connect the text here. Let's put that in there. Convert all of these. Save that. Refresh. There we are. And now, if of course, if I change this color here, I have this color red, we could maybe even put it in here. We say a color, copy that, convert it to this, and we're going to say a constant color equals, uh, let's say color blue. Save, refresh, and now we have a different way, a different color design as well. So with this, you can play a lot, because even if we do this one, 100, save that. You can see now the text effect is extending as well, nice. So with this, you can do all kinds of stuff and you can really create a new way of displaying your text in the canvas.